Hi guys, Marcus here, and welcome to Chinese Entertainment Update, January twenty second, twenty twenty three. I release episodes every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday between seven and ten p.m. Pacific time. This is episode six hundred and thirty nine, and the rundown with timestamps is in the description box below. Now, because I use Chinese names quite a bit on my show, if you want the English spelling of them, you can turn on subtitles. I create them myself. In today's episode, Three Body and the Knockout get impressive opening Topan ratings. Bill Raba and Pan Yuming are rumored to headline the drama Sharp Sword Rose. Yuki Chen apologizes for her comments on the color pink. And Wang Yipo, who is Yuehua Entertainment's highest earner, is announced as company shareholder now. We'll get to the top 10 Chinese web and TV dramas of the week, as we do every Sunday. But first, let me wish you all a happy Lunar New Year. It is the year of the rabbit, and the rabbit is supposed to symbolize hope and peace, and possibly signal a calmer year ahead. Take from that what you will. Usually this time of the year, I take some time off, and we go traveling overseas to visit friends and family. But this year, with the baby and all, we decided to stay put. However, you're celebrating Lunar New Year. If you're celebrating it, I wish you health, prosperity, and happiness. All right, on with the show. We usually begin with what's recently premiered, but nothing to report for today in the past few days. So we begin with dramas that recently announced their premiere dates. There's Viva Femina, starring Yin Tao and Jasper Liu. A couple of days ago, the modern drama announced a January 25th premiere. According to Baidu, it follows the romance between Yin Tao's character, a sales director of a beauty center, and Jasper Liu's, a young aesthetic physician. Viva Femina is slated for 35 episodes and will stream on IGE. Then there's For the First Time in My Life, also a modern drama. This one stars Ava Wang, Tina Tang, and Mayo Li Wu, and a couple of days ago announced a January 27th premiere. According to Baidu, it follows three stories, one set in the 90s, one in the aughts, and one in the 2020s, all discuss the true meaning of parenting and nurturing the next generation. For the first time in my life is slated for 12 episodes and will stream on Mango TV. Lastly, there's Hello There, a costume drama starring Jing Meichen and Meng En. Earlier this week, they announced a January 31st premiere. According to Baidu, the drama follows the head of the Tang sect and the head of the Xuanqi Mountain as they go on a hilarious journey to find the Destined One. At the same time, they fall in love. Hello There is slated for 24 episodes and will stream on IGE. So, three dramas announcing their premiere dates. I will update again on where to watch them with English subs, if available, after they premiere. Next up, drama wraps. I have just one to update on. Our Interpreter is an upcoming modern drama starring Victoria Song and Chen Xingxu. On January 20th, they shared photos to announce their rap. The drama started filming at the end of October last year, so it was almost a three-month shoot. Victoria Song last starred in last year's Almost Lover with Timmy Xu, whereas Chen Xingxu last starred in the 2021 Republican era drama Fall in Love with Zhang Jingyi. According to Baidu, our interpreter follows a world-class interpreter, played by Victoria Song, who reconnects with a huge company's chief technology officer, played by Cheng Xingxu. Eight years ago, she broke up with him to fulfill her mother's dream of becoming an interpreter at the UN. Alright, moving on, two currently streaming dramas recently got their opening Topan ratings, and they're both impressive scores. The first is Three Body, the sci-fi drama starring Edward Zhang and Yu He Wei. On January 18th, it got an opening average score of 8.0 from over 98,000 ratings on Douban. The other is The Knockout, the crime drama starring Zhang Yi and Zhang Songwen. On January 18th, it got an opening average score of 8.7 from over 27,000 ratings on Douban. I read a comment recently that I agree with. There is some good competition going on in TV drama land at the moment. Other than the two aforementioned dramas, Meet Yourself with Crystal Liu and Li Xian opened recently with an 8.1 rating. All three were in the mix for top TV drama this week. I'll reveal the champion later. Usually, it's web dramas that have tight races to become champion of the week. Like last summer, it was Love Like the Galaxy, Love Between Fairy and Devil, and to some extent, Immortal Samsara. More recently, it's The Blood of Youth and Unchained Love. Good to see some competition for TV dramas as well. 
Lastly, for drama updates, here's a hashtag that got netizens buzzing on the Weibo sphere recently. Rumors spread online of Del Raba and Pan Yueming headlining Li Jian Mei Gui, literally translated as Sharp Sword Rose. The hashtag was spread by many bloggers, including some usually reliable ones. On Douban, the drama is described as a crime mystery and the two stars are indeed listed as lead actors. Del Raba last starred in The Blue Whisper, whereas Pan Yueming last starred in Kunlun Tomb. Both dramas came out last year. If there's any truth to this rumor, then it sounds like Del Raba is doing another so-called serious drama. She recently filmed Prosecution Elite, also a serious drama, and a departure from her usual idol costume dramas like The Blue Whisper, or romance dramas like the super popular You Are My Glory, in which she starred with Yang Yang. Interestingly enough, Pan Yueming was also in You Are My Glory. He played Yu Tu's senior. According to Douban, Sharp Sword Rose follows a policewoman on a mission to crack down on child and women trafficking. At the same time, she discovers the truth behind her boyfriend's murder. And that's it for drama updates. Moving on, celebrity updates, and today we begin with Yuki Chen, who recently posted an apology. Here is a Sina Entertainment article published on January 19th titled, Yuki Chen said pink is too girly, and then apologized. Will be more cautious with my words and deeds in the future. Recently, the costume drama Unchained Love released a clip of some behind the scenes footage. In it, according to Asena, lead actress 30 year old Yuki Chen was shown as saying to another girl, I don't like pink, it's too girly. You really are a girl, we all think pink is too girly. This led to heated discussion among netizens on social media. Yuki then responded by sharing this on her Weibo on January 18th. Quote, Liking a color can be subjective, but I shouldn't use my subjective judgments, and I apologize to everyone. I will be more cautious with my words and deeds, continue to accept everyone's supervision and suggestions, and strive to be better professionally. End quote. Yuki Chen stars in Unchained Love and also in the movie Sakura, in which it looks like she wears pink too. What do you guys think? Did Yuki's opinion of a color warrant a public apology like that? By the way, Sakura has dropped onto online streaming platforms like it said it would, but at the moment it looks like it's only Chinese streaming platforms, namely Aichi, uh, Tencent, and Yuku, not international ones yet. Next up for celebrity updates, Maggie Huang is leaving Jaywalk Studio. The 32-year-old actress shared this message on Weibo to say that she's grateful for the 10 years she spent at Jaywalk. Now that her contract is up, she wants to venture the world. She wishes the Jaywalk family better and better. Gracious as Maggie was, some of her fans were a bit more direct, some rejoicing and saying it was about time she left. They cited that despite bursting onto the scene with the super popular Eternal Love, Maggie never got any lead roles after that. They also said they hoped she would get more lead roles in the future. Maggie had memorable supporting roles in Eternal Love and Princess Agents. More recently, she was in Side Story of Fox Volant. She will also be in the Cecilia Liu drama A Journey to Love. Vin Zhang also left Jaywalk last year. Some notable artists who are still with them include Del Raba and Bengo Gao. Lastly, before we get to this week's top 10, Wang Yipo is now a shareholder at Yuehua Entertainment. 25-year-old Wang Yipo is riding a hot streak. Last year, he starred in the crime drama Being a Hero. And at the moment, he stars with Tony Leung in The Hidden Blade. Certainly, judging from ticket pre-sales and the box office so far, it's one of the hottest movies this Lunar New Year. On January 19th, Equal's management company, Yuehua Entertainment, went public and launched its IPO on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Equal was present at the launch and on the day was also announced as a shareholder. Equal renewed his contract with Yuehua in October last year, which will keep him as a Yuehua artist until 2026. Reportedly, of the 700 plus million RMB revenue that Yuehua pulled in in the first three quarters of 2022, Ipo's earnings accounted for 59% of that. When that report came out, fans labeled Ipo the entire company's primary breadwinner. One netizen wrote, What does it feel like to have to feed an entire company? Others joked, The company's fate and future depends on Wang Ipo. 
On that note, it's Sunday today, so time for the Top 10 Chinese Dramas of the Week, edition 156, January 22, 2023. The data is provided by VLinkage, a marketing consultant company based in Shanghai. They provide top drama charts every day. In this segment, the drama standings are based on their 7-day total points, beginning last Sunday and ending yesterday. We begin with the top 10 web dramas. The list is based on view counts on Yuku, Aichi, and Tencent, social media discussions, and Baidu searches. Number 10. Time and Him Are Just Right The Modern Drama Stars Lu Xiao and Wu Junting Number 9. Mi Xiaochuan's School Diary The Modern Drama Stars Jason Kuo and Coco Chen Number 8, Insect Totem, the Republican era drama stars Zhang Mingyun and Hu Bingqing. Number 7, My Lethal Man, the modern drama stars Li Mochi and Fan Zixing. Number 6, New Life Begins, the costume drama stars Bai Jingqing and Tian Xiwei. Number 5, Country Love Season 15, the modern drama stars Tang Zhenjun and Wang Xiaoli. Number 4, Choice Husband, the costume drama stars Sophie Zhang and Xing Zhaoling. Number 3, Song of the Moon, the costume drama stars Vin Zhang and Xu Lu. Number 2, Unchained Love, the costume drama stars Dylan Wang and Yuki Chen. And number 1, The Blood of Youth, the costume drama stars Li Hongyi and Liu Xueyi. The Blood of Youth is champion for a second week running. It garnered 387 points. The reason for the low score is because V-Linkage did not publish any numbers for web or TV dramas on January 20th and the 21st. I'm guessing it's because of the Lunar New Year. Next up, here are the top 10 Chinese TV dramas of the week. The list is based on TV ratings and social media discussions in China. Number 10, Valor Imposing Wall, the Republican era drama stars Zhou Xu and Vicky Wang. Number 9, Seething Mountains, the Revolution era drama stars Song Jialun and Liang Lingling. Number 8, Bright Future, the modern drama stars Hu Ke and Wu Yue. Number 7, Liberation of Shanghai, the Republican era drama stars Zhang Jiayi and Liu Tao. Number 6, Wild Bloom, the modern drama stars Xiao Li Ying and Oh Hao. Number 5, Flight to You, the modern drama stars Wang Kai and Seven Tan. Number 4, In Spite of the Strong Wind, the modern drama stars Jing Dong and Song Jia. Number 3, The Knockout, the modern drama stars Zhang Yi and Zhang Song Wen. Number 2, Meet Yourself, the modern drama stars Crystal Liu and Li Xian. And number 1, Three Body, the modern drama stars Edward Zhang and Yu Ho Wei. Three Body ends the week with 430 points, making it champion for a third week running. There it is guys, hope this gives you an idea of what dramas are hot in Chinese drama land at the moment. Tune in again next week to see how your favorite dramas perform. And before I let you guys go, I want to give virtual high fives to QD and Lisa C, who recently became patrons on my Patreon. Thank you for your support, guys. And that brings us to the end of this episode. This show wouldn't be possible without you guys tuning in, so I thank you all for your support. If you enjoyed it, do subscribe, and don't forget to click that notification button for more updates. If you'd like to contribute, consider giving this video a super thanks. It is the heart-shaped button with the dollar sign below this video. All funds support the show and keep it going. Or you can check out my Patreon page, where for a dollar or more a month, you'll have access to parts like recaps, requests, and have your questions answered. So stay safe, and as always, I wish you clear blue skies, good health, and happiness. Until next time, cheers!